This lesson is on exponential and log functions. And we'll start out with the definition and then dive right into some examples. And in sort of equation terms, an exponential function is one that we can write in the form p equals p naught e to the kt, or equivalently, p equals p naught a to the t. And we'll say something a little bit later on about the equivalence between those two things. Now, perhaps more importantly, from a mathematical modeling standpoint, exponential functions describe growth or decay at a fixed percentage per unit change in input. And we'll try to return to that point as well. Let's go on, though, with a few quick examples. Suppose that you have a savings account, um, and we'll call the balance B at any time, and you have an initial deposit of B naught dollars. So if you start out with 100 bucks in your savings account, B naught is 100. And we're going to measure time in years, so T is going to be the independent variable, and your interest is going to be compounded annually at an interest rate R. And what compounded annual me annually means is uh, whatever your balance is on December 31st, um, if you're getting 3% interest, then when the clock strikes and the year changes, you earn 3% on top of whatever figure was just in your bank account. That's not how interest really works, but this is a very simple situation I'm describing. So we can write down a simple equation to describe it. Okay, so um, we can write uh, we can describe your balance at time t as b equals b naught 1 plus r to the t power. So you can see that if r is 3%, every time t increases by 1, b naught gets multiplied by a factor of 1.03. So that's 3% increase per year. Okay, here's another example. The number n of bacteria in a sample after t hours, where the initial population is n naught and the reproductive rate is k, um, we can describe this with an exponential function, n equals n naught e to the kt. The number n of radioactive particles in a sample after t hours, where the initial number is n naught and the decay rate is k, n equals n naught e to the minus kt. So this is exponential growth, this is exponential decay, we're assuming k is a positive number, um, and we'll say, we'll say more about those things. So parameters of exponential functions. For the exponential function p equals p naught e to the kt, p naught is the vertical intercept. Okay, it says when t equals zero, what's the value of the function? Okay, also um, increasing or decreasing the value of p shifts that intercept. So it basically moves the graph, uh, I should say it's, it's not really a line, graph of the curve up or down. Okay, and let's see uh, a couple examples of that. Here's one e to the t. Here's 2e to the t. So the intercept is shifted up by one unit right here. That's one unit. Okay, can do one more. There's 3e to the t. That shifts us up by yet one more unit. One from here to here, and one from here to here. All right, now let's talk about the other important parameter, k. K is the growth or decay constant, and it's what affects or what controls the percentage change in P for each unit change in T. And positive numbers in that exponent, positive, something positive in front of the T means growth, something negative in front of the T means decay. And increasing or decreasing the magnitude of K speeds up or slows down that change. So let me show you, here's the function P equals E to the point 2T. Here's p equals e to the 0.1t. Since 0.1 is still a positive number, we still have exponential growth, but that growth is slower than the previous uh, example. Okay, here's e to the minus 0.1t. So now it's negative. That means that our quantity is going to decay. So this is exponential decay at a pretty slow rate. And if we make that coefficient in front of the t even more negative, we see something like this, e to the minus 0.2t. Okay, so this is exponential decay, but at a slightly faster rate. Let's say a little bit more about exponential growth and how to determine whether given data is exponential or not. Um, since an exponential function has only one growth constant, right, there's only one value of k or one value of a, we can assess if data is exponential by checking the ratio between points um, making sure to be careful about whether or not they're equally spaced, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. I do want to comment that this is very idealized. 
So in the real world, data will never be perfectly exponential, and this test won't work perfectly, but I've given you perfect data just to make the concept very clear. So for this example, consider the number of bacteria in a biological sample in a lab as a function of time since the start of the experiment. The independent variable is time t in hours. The dependent variable is the number of bacteria n in 100s. We get some data here, okay? And we might go ahead and plot it, n versus t, it looks like this. And we say, hmm, maybe an exponential model's in order. So we're gonna start testing some data. Um, and we are gonna choose a pair of points, and the first pair of points I'll choose is these, okay? And what we can do is just hypothesize um, exponential change, right? So I'm gonna write down n equals n naught a to the t, and plug in two points. For the point zero, one, this tells us one equals n naught a to the zero, okay? Plugging in the first point. For the second point, um, it's at time one, there's 1.3 hundreds of bacteria, or 130 bacteria. So we plug in and we get 1.3 equals n naught a to the one. And what I'm gonna do now is take these two equations and divide the second one divided by the first one. So on the left-hand side, I get 1.3 divided by one. On the right-hand side, I got n naught a to the one divided by n naught a to the zero. So over here, you can see that the factors of n naught cancel out a to the one over a to the zero is just a, and I find that a equals 1.3. Okay, um, that would mean that over that first unit of time, one hour, the number of bacteria increased by 30%. Okay, so we've checked one pair of points, but now let's check another pair. And now I'm gonna use, uh, just to make this crystal clear, two points that don't have uh, one unit of time between them, but have two units of time between them. So let's use these two points. We have the same functional form, and we plug in um, the first point, we get 2.2 .2 equals n naught a cubed. We plugged in the second point, we get 3.71 equals n naught a to the fifth. Once again, I'm going to divide these equations. I get 3.71 over 2.2 .2 equals n naught a to the fifth over n naught a cubed. Um, and what happens here is that the n naughts cancel. a to the fifth over a cubed is a squared. So a squared is going to equal this ratio, so we have to take the square root. So a is going to equal the square root of 3.71 over 2.2, or 1.3, which is the same. So even out here on the graph, over one unit of time, it increased by 30%, or got multiplied by a factor of 1.3 during each hour. So we conclude that, yeah, this data looks pretty exponential. We could check other pairs of points as well if we wanted to. Okay, let's do a little sidebar. We're gonna talk about the natural logarithm for a moment, and there's quite a lot that could be said about the natural logarithm. We're not going to say it all. Um, we're just going to use it as a tool, and the idea is that it's our tool for solving for an unknown in an exponent, okay? So the way to solve for an unknown in an exponent is to use log functions. In calculus, the most common one we use is the log base e, which is sometimes called the natural log, which is sometimes written ln. That's how we'll often write it. And the point is that ln of x is the inverse function of e to the x. So what that means is that if you had e to the x, x is your input, you take e to that, and then if you took the natural log of the answer, you get back out x. ln undoes exponentiation. So to do a very quick example, if we would like to solve 3e to the 4t equals 1 for the unknown t that's stuck up in the exponent, we can start off with that equation here. We can divide each side by 3 to get this equation here. And then we're going to take the natural log of each side. So natural log of e to the 4t is natural log of 1 third. Since natural log and exponentiation are inverse functions, on the left-hand side I just get 4t. On the right-hand side I get natural log of a third and we can divide by four to find that t equals natural log of a third over four. That's how we use natural log. And there are some properties of natural log that you're probably familiar with from your algebra or your pre-calculus class. Um, now, I want to use that fact to explore a statement I made uh, earlier in this screencast about the forms of exponential functions. I said p naught e to the kt is an exponential function, and p naught a to the t is also an exponential function. When are these things the same, or how are they the same? And if you want to know, you just equate them. p naught e to the kt equals p naught a to the t. p naught cancels from each side, so we get e to the kt equals a to the t. 
And then I'm going to just apply natural log to each side to get this equation here. Okay? Since natural log and exponentiation are inverse functions, ln of e to the kt is just kt here. And then for ln of a to the t, we can use a property of natural logs that lets us take this exponent t and bring it down in front of the natural log. So I get kt equals t ln a. Now I'm going to divide through by a factor of t. So we find that k equals ln a. So in other words, these two original functions, these different ways of writing an uh, exponential function, they're the same so long as you choose the right value of k or the right value of a. And the relationship has to be k equals ln a. We've already said that when k is greater than 0, we have exponential growth. Well, if k is greater than 0, it turns out that means a is greater than 1, because natural log of something greater than 1 gives you a positive number. k less than 0 means decay, and that turns out to mean that a is between 0 and 1. All right, now let's talk about half-life and doubling time. For exponential growth, we often ask about the time necessary for the original amount of stuff you have, the original value, to have. That's when things are going down, when there's decay. For exponential growth, we often ask about the amount of time for the original amount of stuff you have, or that original value, to double. And there's nothing special about asking about halving or doubling, it's just a convention. And the amount of time to do those things are called the half-life and the doubling time. And one interesting thing about them is that they don't depend on the initial value. So if you have a substance that's decaying radioactively, um, it doesn't matter if you start out with a million particles or 798 particles. The amount of time for those to cut in half is the same. And that's just a property of exponential change. So suppose we have our previous problem where there's bacterial growth that increases by 30% every hour described by the function n of t equals n naught 1.3 to the t. We can ask, what is the doubling time? And we can note that at time equals 0, the value of the function when we plug in 0 in the exponent is n naught 1.3 to the 0. That's just n naught. And then we can ask, what is the unknown time, we'll call it t sub d for doubling time, at which we have twice what we started with? So plugging into the function, that's n naught 1.3 to that unknown doubling time equals twice what we started with, all right? Um, and let's see, what we can do is we can take this equation here, and we can note that we can cancel out a factor of n naught on each side to get 1.3 to the td equals 2. To solve for that unknown in the exponent, we'll take the natural log of each side, and then we'll take that unknown exponent and use the rules of natural logs to bring it down in front. So we get t sub d, natural log of 1.3, equals natural log of 2. Dividing through, we find t sub d equals this expression, punch it into our calculator, and find the answer is about 2.6 hours. So it takes 2.6 hours for the number of bacteria in our bacterial culture to double. All right, now we've reached the end of this lesson. I want you to ask yourself if you can do the following things. Explain exponential functions in words, equations, and graphs. Describe what changing parameters in exponential functions does. Assess if given data is exponential, and if it is, model it. Solve for unknowns in an exponent using the natural logarithm. Understand how to write exponential functions in different forms, but that are mathematically equivalent. And determine half-lives and doubling times, and use that information. All right, thanks for listening.